When it comes to managing your configuration data over time, how do you effectively manage that? At Configit, the founders of Configuration Lifecycle Management, we've implemented a system using a series of programs, events, and effectivity dates so that you can easily manage your configuration data over time. So let's take a look at how that might work with a simple example. We're going to go out to events. And as you can see, we already have a couple of events here to manage different releases, different obsolescence of different product options. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new one. So we have two things we're going to showcase in this video. We're going to showcase how to create an event and assign different features to those events. And then, of course, how we can obsolete stuff as well. So let's go to new event. For this one, we're going to do 2025 features. It's going to be for all of the new features we're going to release in our 2025 product model offering. And so product 2025 updates. The date of the event, we're obviously going to go out to 2025, January 1st. And that's going to be when all of this comes into play. Now, by itself, effectivity is just a date. It's just a way to set an instance of an occurrence. The type running, we could also do volume or pre-volume. And of course, if we wanted to create programs, a set of events, we could do that as well. Let's go ahead and create new event. And now we can have our 2025 product feature updates. What we want to do now is we want to be able to assign different features to this. So let's go out to features and families. We actually have a new color coming out for the upcoming year. We're going to go ahead and add it to the proc model. So here we want to find pewter gray to a search. We're going to add this to our product model. And now you can see we have the ability to assign the effectivity date for when this color is available. Given that this is going to be released in our 2025 product model, I can go out and I can select the first available date will be the 2025 update effectivity date. And maybe we want to have this until the end of time. I'm going to go ahead and add that feature. But we also want to do some other stuff here. We also want to be able to obsolete data. So let's go ahead and find our paint color. So you can see here that we have our pewter gray, which isn't available until the 2025 updates effectivity date. And it's available till the end of time. But we also have something else coming up. We have a net zero or a carbon neutral pledge where we want to be more environmentally friendly. One of the products inside of there is our metal gray paint. It has metal flakes in it. It's a little bit challenging to produce, and it's not quite great for the environment. So we want to be able to obsolete this. I'm going to click on edit, and now you can see the start date. We don't want to change that, but we do want to change the end date. We have a net zero inventory commitment pledge. We're going to select that as our inventory date when we no longer can offer the gray metal paint. Go ahead and hit save. And then likewise, we can also do the same thing for other features. So if we have other different features that we want to obsolete, in this case, we have some printing technology, the inkjet, we want to be able to obsolete that. It's kind of outdated. And we also don't want to have to worry about its environmental impact. We can go ahead and do the same thing for that one as well. Now, why this is great, why it's so wonderful to assign effectivity dates, you can do this to features, you can do it to families, you can even assign effectivity dates to rules. So you can have rules that become active on certain dates or are no longer valid on certain dates. Now, this is great because it allows you to manage your data over time. You don't have to spend countless hours putting in if then statements, assigning dates, date formats inside of your code. It's just part of the program itself. Let me go ahead and compile. And what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and check. But before I do that, I did want to mention one other great benefit to this is doing this allows you to release your data when you need to. You don't have to worry about releasing the data at 11.59 p.m. on a Sunday night to make sure that you have these changes in place at the exact time and date. It's part of the inherited model. Let's go out to verify to go test this now. Go find our product model. We'll be able to validate that the options are valid. So I'm gonna make a few selections here for our different scoping parameters. 
And of course, the date, we want to be able to pick a date that tests all three of these different events. So let's just go ahead and select a date in the middle of August for right now. And if we go down to our paint, if I go out to that, Actually, let me go ahead and click back here. You can see our paint color, we have metal gray, cobalt blue, and other as our available options. Let's go ahead and change our build date now to sometime in 2025. So click out, click in, and now we have August 2025. And you can see now we have both metal gray and pewter gray. Now this is great because it kind of acts as a buffer period where we can use this to transition from the old metal gray into the pewter gray. And then likewise, if we were to go out to a future date sometime in past the net zero pledge, and now I go back out, you can see we have the cobalt blue, other, and now we have pewter gray. So we no longer have that environmentally unfriendly option in there, the metal gray. And if we also check on the bag features, we can go to the print technology and we no longer have the regular old inkjet as an option. So this is great because it allows you to ensure that your product models are accurate. Not only the current state, you can also go back in time and test and you can go in the future and test as well. This helps reduce errors downstream, especially when you're promoting to production. And you don't have to worry about how this impacts downstream whenever you have this scenario. So do you have the capability to do configuration lifecycle management?